Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to the Kellogg's Ips YouTube channel. So, for today's video, we're going to be doing a watercolour tutorial to introduce you guys to a number of wet on dry watercolour techniques, which means painting onto a dry surface. Beginning out with watercolour, you might intuitively only ever think of painting in flat blocks of colours and shapes. But with watercolour painting, there are so many different techniques that you can use. These techniques then become really important to understand and learn because you can start to apply them into your own work to create awesome effects like uh, bleeds, soft edges, um, splatters, all sorts of cool things. So that hopefully by the end of this series, you guys will be equipped with a number of techniques that you can start integrating into your own work. And if you guys haven't yet seen my previous introductory watercolor tutorial, be sure to check it out. I'll put it um, here somewhere or here, <laughs> uh, just in the links down below. So let's get started. For wet on dry, there are seven techniques that we'll go through. This video is already quite long, so it'll be split into two different parts. In this first video, we'll be covering flat washes, gradient washes, and dry brushing. But before we start, we'll need some supplies. I'm going to show you guys what supplies are used for this exercise, but keep in mind that by no means is this the exact supplies that you need. Starting off with brushes, I'm going to be using two different types. A pointed round brush, which is good for general painting and detailing, and a short flat brush for doing watercolour washes. Next up, paper. I'm going to use this medium toothed 300 GSM watercolour paper. Medium tooth paper or cold pressed paper is good for adding texture to your paintings, and because the paper is 300 GSM, it will be able to withstand a decent amount of water before buckling or warping. For paints, I'm going to be using two different colours here, a deep cadmium red and a cerulean blue. Lastly, we'll need two empty jars or cups for the water, one for clean water and one for dirty water. And with that, we're ready to go! Here I'm just setting up a little grid on this sheet of paper by dividing sections using masking tape. You don't have to do this, but it does help a little if you want to try the exercises all in one page and keep it a little bit neat. The first technique we're going to look at is flat washes. A uh, flat wash is where a whole layer of paint is applied over consistent, uniform transparency throughout. It can be anywhere between being completely opaque and transparent. Let's first try an opaque wash. Start by loading lots of paint onto your brush with very little dilution. You do this by wetting your brush with only a little amount of water. Once your brush is loaded with paint, start applying onto the paper. I like to use a sideways sweeping motion like this. I'm sweeping the brush from left to right and trying to spread and flatten the paint out to ensure that there's no patches or puddles of paint, and I'm just working downwards. When the brush starts to run dry of paint, I just reload the brush with more paint and continue working on the flat wash. If you find that there are some patchy parts, you can always go over it again by applying another layer or just spreading the current layer. By the end of it, you should get a flat, solid, evenly spread coat of paint, and that's our opaque flat wash. Now let's try doing a transparent flat wash or a glaze. Here we're using the same techniques and approach as before, but this time the paint that we're applying is diluted and watered down. To dilute the paint, I wet the brush generously with the clean water and load it with a little bit of paint and spread the excess onto the palette lid like so. That way, the brush is very watery and diluted with just a bit of colour. I can then go ahead and apply the paint using strokes, just like we did with the opaque flat wash. This is useful if you only want to add a slight tinge or an additional coat of colour over a surface, but keep in mind that it is transparent, so colours and layers and lines will always show beneath. Flat washes are the staple to achieving uniform blocks and shapes of colour, which can be really useful if you want to go for a more illustrative or graphic art style. The key thing to practice and learn here is achieving uniformity and evenness within your washes. Now let's try a gradient wash. The aim here is to create a gradient, whether from light to dark or from one colour to another. With tonal gradients, you can achieve this in two different ways, by going light to dark or dark to light. First, let's try a tonal gradient from going light to dark. Start off by wetting your brush generously in clean water. To remove excess water, I just press my brush against the sides of the jar like so. Now, do a few strokes across the paper to spread the water and dampen it. That way, the paint won't go everywhere and I'll have more control. 
In these next strokes, I want to start adding color gradually. I dilute the paint here by loading the brush with water and only a little bit of paint. I'm using the same stroke motion, but notice how I slightly overlap my previous strokes. Continue repeating the same steps, with each stroke slowly adding more paint and diluting it less by using less water. You continue this process until you start adding pure colour, which is where you end up at the end of your gradient. You can already start to see how it blends from pure white to gradual colour. At this point, my gradient wasn't blended smoothly like I wanted, and that's fine. If you find that your gradient isn't blending so well, or that there's a stroke mark or a puddle of pigment, you can go over the gradient again to smooth and blend it out while it's still wet. I wanted mine to be a little bit darker, so I went over the area again starting from the top, sideways, working downwards. You can see how the gradient is slowly darkening, but it's also smoothing its transition from light to dark. If you find that your gradient is too dark, you can lighten it by reworking the area again, but instead of using diluted paint, you use clean water instead. This will lift some of the pigment and actually make the gradient lighter, but blending the transition at the same time. Try to start at the ends rather than somewhere randomly in the middle. If you do start in the middle or in some random part, you tend to get some random patches of colour or even some accidental blooms. Now let's try a tonal gradient but going dark to light. We're going to be using the same approach and same methods, but just in reverse. Start off by loading your brush with undiluted pure paint by using as little water as possible. Apply the first few strokes, like so, to get those bold colours. Then dip your brush lightly into the water to remove some excess pigment, which will lighten your next few strokes. Repeat these steps with each consequent stroke, dipping your brush into more water increasingly. Each time you add more water to the brush by dipping it into water, you are diluting the paint, which is how we get that gradual blend from pure paint to pure water. By the end of the gradient, you should be painting with just clean water. Just like before, to smooth and blend out the transition, you can go over the area starting from either end and reworking the paint while it's still wet. I wanted to darken mine a little bit, so with my brush still wet, I went over it again like so. These are just two different methods of achieving a simple tonal gradient, and you can use them in many different ways, depending on your preference, whether light to dark or dark to light. Now we'll try a gradient wash again, but this time transitioning from one colour to another. It's exactly the same steps and process as before, but this time, instead of diluting with water, we're diluting with water and another colour. For this example, I'm going to work from top to bottom, starting off with a pure red. We're using the same approach as the dark to light gradient method of gradually diluting each stroke with more water. We're only going to paint the red until midway though. Here I used a bit too much paint and water, so I'm just spreading it downwards with a wet brush like so. Now we want to start blending to blue. We're going to use the same light to dark gradient method by starting with a very watered down diluted blue wash and working our way to a pure blue by slowly adding paint with each stroke. I loaded my brush here with a bit too much excess paint, so I'm just removing the excess by pushing the brush against the side of the palette and the jar. Then I just continue painting those gradients in until I get those pure blues. Like before, my gradient is a bit patchy, so I want to blend it out a little. I get a diluted blue wash and work the blue upwards to blend gradually into the reds and I'm doing the reverse with the reds, working a diluted red wash downwards to blend into the blues. Now let's try another coloured gradient wash, but this time using only a dark to light approach. Just like before, we're starting with a pure red and gradually diluting each stroke to create the gradient from dark to light, only until midway. Try to keep this mid area quite wet, as we need to rework it soon, so you do have to be quite quick. We're then going to switch to the opposite end and do the same thing with the blue, going dark to light. Once the diluted blues reach the middle, the still wet reds should start to bleed and mix into the blues, and you can then rework it with a wet brush, doing repeated overlapping strokes to blend in the colours and get a nice transition. I personally prefer this method, as I feel like I have more control over the transitions. The key thing with gradient washes is controlling your dilutions. Keep experimenting with how much water you need to dilute the paint and how much water you need to remove to have more solid colour. 
By understanding dilutions, you'll be able to apply this knowledge to all of your watercolour techniques. The next set of techniques that we're going to look at is dry brushing, and you might need some tissue paper for this one. Dry brushing is just where you're applying paint from a semi-wet or semi-dry brush onto the paper. This is where the textures of the paper, or of the brush itself, really start to show. It's a great technique for texturing to get this scratchy, dried up effect. So let's first look at dry brushing using a flat brush. First, wet the brush and then dry it off using the tissue paper. We want the paint to be dry rather than soaking wet. Then, dip your brush into the paint and apply. I'm just going to do thin strokes using the side of the flat brush, kind of like grass. You'll instantly notice that the paint has a unique scratchy texture, and it's because the brush is dried up. This texture becomes more evident as the paint starts to dry up the more you use it. Now let's try dry brushing with the whole brush. I'm going to reload some of the paint and really work the whole brush and imagine I'm trying to colour in a large block, like a flat wash. You'll notice I can't really get a solid block of flat colour and it's because of the texture of the paper and the dryness of the brush. This can be used for some cool effects like maybe rust or even a gravel or dirt kind of effect if you're painting something like that. Let's try dry brushing with straight strokes this time. I'm going to use the fat side of the flat brush and only dip in the very tips of the brush in paint and applying the strokes like so. This is where the individual hairs of the brush really come through and you get this kind of dry up scratching line effect. I can even grab a ruler as a guide and paint the same stroke in to get these straighter lines. You might even want to try adding a bit more paint or wetness to the brush, but not too much, and try the same thing. You'll notice that the lines get even thicker and streakier. Next, let's look at dry brushing, but with a round brush. We're going to use the same approach of wetting and drying the brush on tissue paper, and then loading the brush with paint and apply using an angled brush technique like so. We're just kind of dabbing and dragging the brush across the page like this. Already you can see the effect of it, and it's these splotches of solid colour. You can even try a different application technique and repeatedly tap the brush on its side like this. The scratchy texture is coming through from the hairs of the brush again, kind of like a rock texture. You can even stipple with the brush like this for another funky little effect. The last dry brush technique we're going to look at is with this fan brush that I customised. Fan brushes have a unique little shape, and I trimmed this old one so it was more like a rake. So let's see what we can do with this bad puppy. Same approach, wet brush, dry on tissue, dip in paint, apply. I'm going to do vertical streaks like I did with the flat brush, and you can see all the individual hairs creating these awesome streaky scratches. I even went ahead and tried a stippling effect with the tip of the brush and even some curved streaks like this. Dry brushing is great for adding unique textures to your paintings, especially for landscapes and more nature based paintings. The great thing about dry brushing is that there's no real one right way to do it. Each brush has its own unique properties that can be used for great dry brushing techniques, effects and textures. You just have to experiment. Try come up with your own special dry brush techniques, or maybe even customise your own brush. So we covered only three of the wet on dry techniques in this part one video, so keep an eye out for the next part of the tutorial as we'll be covering four other wet and dry techniques, pooling, feathering, splattering and drips. I'm also going to be doing more future tutorials on other techniques like wet on wet, layering, masking and even texturing. And that's all for today. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to subscribe and keep an eye out for more future videos like this. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.